Now here in this section, we're going to talk about the Cartesian transformation of velocities and static forces from one frame to another. Uh, again, we did this earlier in the velocity propagation method and the force moment propaga propagation methods, where we had to transform velocities and static forces uh, from one frame to another. But in this case here, we're going to do it in the context of uh, transformation matrices uh, that will be used for transforming velocities and static forces. Uh, so here in the first uh, element here, I'm going to talk about velocities, transformation of velocities. Uh, and again, I would like you to think of this as the transformation of a velocity from a specific frame relative to itself to another frame relative to itself at that particular instance. So this is an instantaneous transformation where at that particular instance, the, uh, the robot is considered as a rigid body between the two frames that you're transferring between. Uh, so the joint velocities between these two frames will be considered rigid. Uh, and again, these are the same equations that we've used for velocity propagation, but in this case, uh, theta dot i plus one uh, is considered zero uh, to make it rigid. Now, if I have velocities of frame A relative to frame A, both linear and angular, and I'd like to find velocities of B relative to frame B, both linear and angular. Uh, from these equations, I can uh, form it as transformation matrix that would have uh, all the relationships that would be relating these two velocities uh, in different frames. So the first element here is the rotation of A relative to B, and the diagonal element here is also rotation of A relative to B. So that's the three by three and three by three. And then here, I have negative of the rotation of A relative to B multiplied by uh, the uh, cross multiplier of the origin of B relative to A, that position. And we're going to see how we can define the cross multiplier. Okay. And then here I have a three by three zero matrix. So this whole transformation matrix is a six by six transformation matrix. Uh, this is a, a one column of six by one a vector and this is one column of six by one vector as well. So if we perform this we're going to find uh, the velocities both linear and angular velocities transformed from one frame to another. Now uh, opposite to this if we would like to if we are given uh, the velocities of frame B linear and angular and we'd like to find the velocities of uh, uh, relative to frame A of frame A relative to frame A linear and angular, all we have to do is invert this transformation matrix. So here it's inverted, and we have uh, defined the velocities of frame A relative to A, linear and angular, when we are given the velocities of frame B relative to B, linear and angular. So as you can see here, the cross multiplier now became a cross multiplier with the rotation matrix. And we're going to see how we can define that P cross uh, or the cross multiplier. Now, in the case of static forces, again, we can think of this as an instantaneous transformation of static forces. Um, so here, again, we use the same equations uh, to generate this transformation matrix. If we are given forces and moments of B relative to B, and we need to find forces and moments of A relative to A, we multiply by this transformation matrix. Again, it's a six by six matrix that's multiplied by a six by one vector to give me a six by one vector. Now the opposite uh, thing can happen also here. If we are given uh, the forces and moments in A and we would like to find the forces and moments of B and in B, then we have to transpose or trans uh, invert uh, this uh, transformation matrix. And that's the inverse of the transformation matrix. Okay, so in this case here, I'm given the forces in A and uh, linear and angular forces in A relative to A and I'd like to find the linear and angular forces of B relative to B. And now again, just to define that cross multiplier, uh, a reminder here. So if we have a vector with a cross multiplier here, and the vector is defined by PX, PY, and PZ with that cross, then we can replace this by a cross multiplier, which is a three by three matrix that we can replace here. Okay, so this here, P, B, O, R, G relative to A cross, this whole thing is replaced by a matrix that looks like this.
Now let's take an example on this. Um, here an example we have uh, defined uh, forces moments of frame 5 relative to frame 5 as 2, 3, 4, and 12, 13, and 14. And we need to find these forces uh, acting on frame 3 relative to frame 3, transformed into frame 3. And here we're given the transformation matrix uh, between frames 3 and 5. So this is the definition of frame 5 relative to frame 3. So in this case, I'm going to take this and assume that 5 is B and 3 is A. Okay, so in this case, uh, I'm going to be finding uh, forces and moments uh, in frame A relative to A, and I'm given forces and moments of B relative to B. So I will be using the first equation on the left from the previous uh, slide uh, that shows the transformation of forces and moments. Uh, now, as we said earlier, this here defines the rotation matrix of 5 relative to 3, which is right here. And this element, this matrix here also uh, defines the same rotation matrix of 5 relative to 3. And up top here, I have a 3 by 3 zero matrix. Now, in this uh, quadrant here, I'm defining the origin of frame 5 relative to frame 3. Uh, with the cross multiplier. So this is frame 5 relative to frame 3. When I do the cross multiplier for this, I make it a 3 by 3 matrix that looks like this. And then I multiply this by the rotation matrix of 5 relative to 3. If I do this multiplication here, I get a 6 by 6 matrix. And I multiply this by the 6 by 1 vector. And then I'll get the 6 by 1 vector that defines the forces and moments of 3 relative to frame 3. We're now getting towards the end of this chapter, and I'd like to talk about MATLAB commands uh, that are relevant to the Jacobian. So I'm, I'm going to be using here MATLAB release 2020A, uh, and I would have also a MATLAB robotics toolbox uh, from uh, Corky. So um, the first command is the Jacobian relative to the ground frame, or frame zero. And that command is, you put here your variable, whatever you want to name it, and that equals to, and this is your function, Jacob Z, uh, zero, Jacob zero. And between the two brackets, you put the two arguments. This defines your robot, and the robot has to be defined earlier. And Q here are the joint angles for this particular robot in a, uh, in a vector form. So this would be a, a column of a joint uh, angles. Okay. So if I put this command here, it will give me the Jacobian relative to frame zero. Um, another way to do the Jacobian is the Jacobian relative to the end of vector frame or frame E. And for this, again, I put here the name or how, whatever I want to name the results out of this. And that equals to Jacob E. And that's my uh, function here. Jacob E, and the arguments for this again, the name of the robot that would be defined earlier, and Q is uh, basically a, a column vector that includes the joint angles uh, for my robot. Now let's look at a command window here and see how this can be uh, typed and what kind of results we're getting out of this. Uh, here I'm going to put model MDL underscore Puma 560A or AKB. And this here basically defines a robot that's already predefined in Robotics Toolbox. And that defines a robot named P560M. And it already has the QR, Q uh, stretch, and so forth. So if I type here P560M, I get the DH parameters that define this robot. And it's also defining here QR, which is the joint angles at the ready position. And these are the joint angles. Again, this is Puma robot, so six degrees of freedom and six joints. Now here I'm typing G, J0 equals to Jacob0, and I put here the name of my uh, arm, P560M, and QR are the joint angles, and that directly gives me the Jacobian in frame 0. Similarly, for the Jacobian relative to frame E, or in the vector, I'm using Jacob E, and then here I'm defining my robot, P560M, and I'm defining also QR which includes the joint angles for my robot. Okay, and that gives me JE, which is the Jacobian relative to frame E, 
uh, which is 6 by 6 in this case. Now this will be uh, the conclusion of chapter 5 um, and that would end chapter 5 uh, for this particular course, robotics course.